Japan and Vietnam are planning to go forward with some business that might surprise you. The Japanese and Vietnamese Prime Ministers reconfirmed Monday that Vietnam will purchase Japanese nuclear reactors, despite what happened at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda met in Tokyo with Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Don. They discussed an agreement reached last October that Japan would sell two nuclear reactors to Vietnam. The leaders confirmed that Japan would cooperate in Vietnam's nuclear power project. They promised enhanced safety based on lessons learned from the accident in Fukushima. Noda and Don also agreed on the joint mining of rare earth minerals in Vietnam. Japan and Vietnam are strategic partners. Vietnam's stability and development is important for Japan's national interests. The Vietnamese and Japanese governments will promote projects way back right upon, including the construction of nuclear reactors. Vietnam plans to build 14 nuclear reactors by 2030 to meet increasing demand for electricity in its rapidly growing economy. Japanese companies will build two of those reactors. They're scheduled to start operating in 2021. Japan has been helping Vietnam train engineers in nuclear technology. It's also proposed financial support. Japanese experts say other countries are expected to demand more thorough safety from Japanese nuclear technology following the Fukushima crisis. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Zun is pressing ahead with a plan to buy nuclear technology from Japan. Zun reconfirmed his country's policy to purchase Japanese nuclear reactors despite the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The visiting Prime Minister met mon Monday with Japanese Trade and Industry Minister Yukio Edano. Zun says Vietnam trusts Japan's advanced nuclear technology, and he said his government wants firms here to build the world's safest nuclear power plants in his country. Vietnam plans to build 14 nuclear reactors by 2030 to meet increasing electricity demand amid its rapidly growing economy. Japan and Vietnam concluded an agreement in January that allows Japan to export nuclear technology to Vietnam. Japanese companies have won contracts to build two reactors. Vietnam plans to start operating them in 2021. Japanese experts say that following the Fukushima accident, other countries are expecting to demand more thorough safety of nuclear technology while promoting exports. A senior government official has drunk a glass of water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to demonstrate its safety after being dared to do so by a reporter. On October 7th, the plant's operator, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, began spraying about 70 tons of purified water per day on the facility's compound. The water is taken from the plant's number five and six reactor buildings and used for after removal of radioactive substances and salt. The firm and the government's nuclear safety agency say the level of radioactive cesium in the purified water is below the government standard for bathing. Cabinet Office Parliamentary Secretary Yasuhiro Sonoda drank the water at a press conference on Monday. Asked if he could erase public concerns about the water, Sonoda said he drank it because he was asked to do so. He added that his act cannot ensure the water's safety and that the best way to do so is with data.
Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. It's October 31st. This is the video that contains scientific information that we've been wanting to share with you for a long time. Today, in Washington, D.C., at 8.30 in the morning, scientist Marco Caltafan gave a presentation to some doctors who are part of the American Public Health Association. The paper is now on our website next to this video. To summarize the paper, citizens, some, some doctors and scientists, some bloggers, some farmers around the world provided samples to Mr. Caltafan who analyzed them for Fukushima radiation. An example of what he found is a slide that contains air filters from cars in Japan and in the United States. Cars in the United States hardly have any radiation in their air filters. Cars in Tokyo had quite a lot, way too much. Cars in Fukushima Prefecture were incredibly radioactive. Now, I think it's important because the nuclear industry will say, well, everything's radioactive and, and therefore we shouldn't worry. Well, the Seattle data shows that not everything is radioactive. And it shows that the people in Japan received enormous exposures of particles into their lungs and into their digestive system um, during the course of the accident. Another piece of information is that Fairwinds viewers were able to send in children's shoes from Japan. And Dr. Mr. Caltafan has data that clearly show that the concentration of cesium on the kids' shoelaces was astronomically high, around 80 disintegrations per second. What does that mean? Kids tie their shoes, their hands get radioactive, and it goes into their GI tract. If it's on the ground, it's in the dust in the playground, and it's in their lungs. I think that between the two, the air filters and the children's shoes, it shows that there's a severe personal health problem in Japan that'll manifest itself in cancers over the next 10 or 20 years. Now, Mr. Caltafan didn't just look at Japan. He set up monitoring stations in the United States as well. Two of the three monitoring stations in the United States did show hot particles in the air in April. Since then, there haven't been any hot particles, but in April, it's clear that at the worst of the accident, hot particles were wafted across the Pacific and deposited in Seattle and in Boston at least. There's also data that indicates contamination on the ground in the Cascades, which are mountain range right up against the Pacific Ocean. So I think we have two problems here. In Japan, there's a personal health issue. And what that means is that individuals have received enough radiation that there's going to be a statistically meaningful increase in cancers in Tokyo and especially in Fukushima Prefecture. In the United States, it's a different story. It's a public health issue and not a personal health issue. What that means is that we'll never know who's the individual who got cancer from Fukushima, but we can be sure that the radiation did reach here and that there will be an increase in cancers, especially on the West Coast, where the Rocky Mountains stopped most of the radiation and deposited it on the ground. So this paper was given to the American Public Health Association. And here, it's a public health issue. We can't run and we can't hide, but the radiation is, is up and down the West Coast and then also scattered about the rest of the United States. Japan, it's a different story. They need to aggressively go after the contamination that's been discovered and so obvious on these air filters and on children's shoes. It takes a concerted national effort, not a haphazard effort of chasing hotspots in order to reduce the amount of radioactivity that's on the soil and in the air in, in Japan right now. And the last thing the paper shows is that it's wrong to have a 10-mile evacuation planning zone. Clearly, the, the damage can extend out as far as Tokyo. We need to look at emergency planning and evacuations well beyond the 10 miles that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uses here and the 12 miles that the Japanese used during the accident. 
You may recall that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said Americans needed to evacuate 50 miles from Fukushima at the peak of the accident. Well, if it's good enough for Americans living in Japan, that same criteria should be good enough for Americans living in the United States. The data in Mr. Kaltafan's paper came from citizens. It came from farmers. It came from scientists. It came from bloggers. It was an it was a effort by individuals and not governments. I think if we had relied on the government to get us this information, we never would have gotten it. So it's an important achievement for all of us to recognize that together, using the internet, we can all provide information for scientists to use to come to rational decisions on public policy. This November, we're asking for your support so we can continue our scientific analysis and these educational videos. There's a donate button on the Fairwind site and we'd appreciate it if you considered a financial contribution. Thank you very much. We'll keep you informed.